everyone. I want to thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. Uh, before I start, I do want to say that I appreciate any constructive feedback that you can have afterwards of my presentation. But I want to make sure I say constructive because I, last time I said criticism, and I got everything from the clothes I was wearing, my haircut, and <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm, I'm serious. You so constructive feedback, please. Uh, let's see. So thank you for the introduction. My name is Francisco Diaz. I'm the assistant county clerk recorder for the county of San Benito. And I oversee the clerk recorder and elections office. But today I'm gonna to be talking to you about elections, of course. Uh, I am state and nationally certified. I have about nine years of experience working with elections here in the county of San Benito. And I'm fortunate to have such a great team and a great mentor in both Angela and Joel Paul Gonzalez, who really foster my growth and also have been doing a great job overseeing all of the elections for the last 15 or 16 years. Now, today, really, of course, we all wanna talk about the recall, right? The one that's going on right now. And this is really what my presentation is gonna focus on. Now, the recall is technically taking place on September 14th. However, here in San Benito County, we mailed out ballots 29 days before the 14th. So most of you, hopefully, Everyone in this room who's a registered voter should have received a ballot in the mail. If you haven't, talk to me afterwards and I'll make sure you get one. Now, those ballots get mailed both because it is a requirement by the state, but also because here in San Benito County, we're applying what's called the vote center model. <coughs> Under the vote center model, every registered voter receives a ballot. In addition, we have four voting locations that are located throughout the county of San Benito. These locations are a little bit different than what you might have experienced in previous years. In previous election cycles, we use what was called the polling place model, where we have smaller uh, polling locations throughout the county. Well, we transitioned to a new model. Under the vote center model, any registered voter of the county can go to any of them. So if you happen to ha uh, find yourself in San Juan Batista, but you live in Hollister, that's not a problem. In addition, with these vote center models, we have the capability of being able to verify that you haven't voted in San Benito County, but anywhere in the state of California. So the moment you check in, goes out to the cloud, it comes back, and every, per, every county in the state of California knows that this person has voted and they're ineligible to vote anywhere else. Under this vote center model, it also provides us the ability to be open four days before election. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Of course, Tuesday is the most fruitful day. Saturday as well. Sunday, not so much. San Juan Batista had one voter for the first six hours. And it wasn't until the last two hours that they were there that they got the other six. So unfortunately, Sunday's not as fruitful, but today has been quite fruitful. Uh, I believe as of right now, we have over 100, 170 people probably have already voted. And we're expecting that to be around 300. And tomorrow, it's gonna to be a very exciting day. Of course, in San Benito County, we also have draw boxes that are located throughout the county, convenient locations. These draw boxes are picked up twice a day. Uh, we have a team of two people that go, and there's a whole log and check of a chain of custody process that takes place. And we also have video surveillance on them as well. So we have 24 hour video surveillance and there's actually someone in my office who's reviewing that video surveillance. So if you happen to drop your ballot, please, you know, wave, say hi. Uh, they will appreciate that because it's not a very fun job. Well, actually, for, for him it is. Oh, he, he likes watching TV. Let's see. As of today, we have about 38% of all registered voters in the county have voted, which is quite exciting. We're actually, San Benito County is pretty high up there compared to the rest of the state. Uh, I would say we're probably in the top 10 overall counties. So I thank all of you for voting. I think that kind of speaks the volumes of our community who happens to be very engaged and really involved in our politics. So I'm hopeful that perhaps this number by the end of today will be in the 40s. And if everything goes right, by the end of the election day, we'll reach high 50s. Let's see, uh, we did have quite a bit of an excitement at the beginning of the election. On the weekend after we mailed out ballots, we had a thousand ballots returned. Generally, we'll have anywhere between two to 300. So that speaks volume. It has plateaued a little bit, but we're expecting uh, the mail today actually to be quite high because this is the weekend that everyone takes the opportunity to vote this past weekend. Those people at least that vote by mail. 
Uh, I also want to give thanks and I want to make sure we all, if you know anybody that's worked at a polling location, that you thank them for their service. It's a long, uh, long process, long day that they have to be there. Uh, so right now we have about 100 volunteers throughout the county. Most of these are volunteers are high school and college students. Here in San Benito County, we do our best to be able to recruit and hire people from a wide array uh, of the community. So political party, age, gender, and also different uh, cultural backgrounds, because we like to make sure that our polling locations represent the community as well. Uh, anybody in addition who works our community, who works in the elections office, goes through a thorough process where we do an FBI and DOJ background check. Uh, anybody who's working at a polling location goes to an additional step and they also have to be verified to make this law. So we want to make sure that we're only hiring the best and brightest here in San Benito County because we take elections seriously, of course. Now, there should be a paper that's going around. I'm not sure if everyone had an opportunity to receive it. Uh, I want to take a couple minutes to be able to talk about this because this is one of the most common questions that we've ever seen. And afterwards, of course, I want to give you enough time to be able to ans ask as many questions as possible that you may have about elections, processes, and hopefully I can answer any questions you may have. But the paper that you have in front of you, it, it's an illustration about the mail ballot chain of custody. I'm fortunate this election to have a college student that just graduated from UC Irvine, who's actually from San Benito High School, and is also one of our captains, who's taking all, every, everything we, we have in the office, processes and procedures, and he's working on workflows and different illustrations to be able to explain these processes a lot better. This is our first draft. It's gonna go through multiple variations of it. So hopefully in the future, we'll have all this on our website so you'll be able to download and share with anybody that you want. Now, in this uh, flow chart that you have in front of you, it explains the mail ballot chain of custody. Basically, what we wanna to show to you here is that there's an extensive process for any ballot that comes to our office. Whether it be a ballot that was deposited in one of our drop boxes, it was dropped off in person, or it was received through the mail, U.S. Post Office most likely. First process, of course, is that we must do a physical uh, inspection of that envelope that we receive in our office. We want to make sure we count them, and we want to make sure we have a supervisor that signs off on that. Thereafter, it's going to go to our envelope signature and uh, signature and envelope scanning machine. That's basically going to scan an image of that, and it's going to give that person credit on that day so that they are not allowed to vote anywhere else in the state of California. The next step is going through an actual inspection verification of the count that was digitally uh, produced with that that was manually counted to make sure there's no discrepancies and to make sure that the numbers match. If everything's in order, the next step will be to have a signature verified on that envelope. We do a two process verification, meaning one person verifies their signature, then the second one. If for any reason there's a discrepancy, that's gonna go to our challenge section. On the challenge section, we're gonna have a supervisor and one additional person verify that signature. They're gonna make sure that the signature matches any of the signatures that you had in your entire history of voting. So if you're one of our seasoned voters, if you've been voting for a long time, we may have anywhere between 10 to 30 signatures on file that we're gonna compare. And if needed, we can also go down to our dungeon and look at our paper signatures that we have to make sure we have a clear comparison. If that process is uh, uh, resolved and let's say there's no issues, well, then it goes to our mail ballot board. We have a team of about 10 members of the community who come in and their entire job is to open that envelope and remove that ballot. They're making sure for a couple things. One, is it a ballot from this election? You'll be surprised how many people use our current envelope and they put a ballot from two or three elections ago. That's the first process. Second, did you actually include a ballot in your envelope? Sometimes we get envelopes with the signature and nothing inside. The other one, did you actually vote according to the instructions? Or did you get creative and cross everything out and make circles and said this guy? Because that happens all the time. Let's say you happen to be creative and it was candidate number eight, but you decided that you wanted to write it on the ballot and circle it, well, there's an additional process. That ballot's gonna be put aside and there's gonna be a team of four people that are gonna have to duplicate your intent. We wanna make sure we give you credit if we can clearly identify what your intent is 
and then a supervisor is going to review what the four people did, and then I'll come back into the process. Next step. After a vote by mail board inspects the entire, all the ballots, they batch them, they put them together in groups, we have another supervisor that's gonna go ahead and verify how many envelopes are there, how many ballots, to make sure it matches the last four steps or so to be able to keep uh, track of the chain of custody and all those ballots that have been moving along. At that point, we're almost there. We're almost at the final one, uh, finish line. Our next step is to prepare the ballots for counting, right? This is the part where we organize everything together, we separate the envelopes, we make sure we straighten out the ballots. Well, you think you're almost done, but then guess what? Things happen. At this point, when we run them through the machine, sometimes uh, we tend to use pencils or pens that don't quite get read by the machine. So at that point, it gets kicked out. And we have an addition team of four people that are gonna verify your intent, duplicate that, verify by the supervisor, and then it comes back into the chain. If everything goes right, that's when your ballot gets counted. That's when you receive credit. That's when we then store them in our vault. And the process is almost over. I know, this is exciting things, right guys? <laughs> uh, at that point, it gets stored. We make sure we continue with all the rest of the ballots, whether it be uh, the ones by mail, election day. And at that point, we do a complete for audit of the entire process, and that's my, that's my fun job. And I basically audit everything that happened at every single day, every single location, and what every single supervisor did along the way. Now, I'm not really involved in any of these other steps that I talked about, and the reason being because it is my job to verify what everyone else has done. At that point, I verify, and if every single day everything audits, we can move forward with the full audit of the ballots, meaning, Yes, we have paper uh, counts of the ballots, but now we need to manually count these ballots. And that's when I bring in a whole another additional team of six people that were not involved in this entire process, and we sit them down and say, here are your ballots, please tell us what the results are. And then we don't tell them what we have on the paper that was produced electronically, and we get one number. We have a whole another team of six people that do the same thing, and if everything matches, we're in a good place. But anybody that works with people, you know the numbers never match. <laughs> and you'll have times where people will count two or three times and the number will not match. And at that point, that's when even my elected official, Joe Paul and myself, we get there and we count and we say, no, it really is 30. And of course, so there's always an argument and debate about, no, there's 28. And But other than that, at that point, the process is over. We're not done yet. We're almost there. At this point, we're about 15 days after the election. At this point, we have to wait for the rest of the people that mail their ballot by mail and who happen to have some sort of issue. We call them a challenge. Perhaps they mail their ballot, their envelope, without a signature. Or they mail their ballot and their signature doesn't match. At this point, we're doing up to five points of contract to try and get this person to come in and resolve their issue. We send a letter, an email, a phone call, and you actually might get a visit for someone like myself or Joe Paul at your house. And we do this because we wanna make sure that every person has an opportunity to have their ballot counted. Uh, yesterday I got the best compliment. A gentleman came into the office and said, God damn it, I'm here, make sure, so you guys stop calling me. I wanna resolve my ballot. And I said, great, that's the best compliment I can receive. He was appreciative and he said, please don't give me a call anymore, I'll do it right next time. Great. <laughs> That was the best compliment I've ever received. Uh, and that's the entire process. And I do wanna encourage anybody that's here, if you wanna come to our facility and observe the process, you're more than welcome. If you actually wanna walk through the entire facility, you wanna see where the ballots are at, you wanna be there on the election night when it gets counted, it's completely open. This is a transparent process and we're happy to have you here. Uh, today, we're actually gonna be, uh, there's a vote center, you can go to the vote center, you can come into our office, Tomorrow on Tuesday is the most exciting day, hopefully. And any of you are welcome to come to be able to observe the process. Either myself, I'll give you a tour, I'll have David or Joe Paul Gonzalez himself actually. Today he was giving a tour to some whole school uh, children and we do this and we offer this service for anybody. We wanna get as many people as possible engaged in this process to assure them that we're taking every preventive measure to make sure that the election is smooth. Ultimately, we don't care about the outcome, we just want to make sure you have an opportunity to deal with it.